Greetings from the Branch of Hope Orthodox Presbyterian Church in Torrance, California. As you can see, we're in our sanctuary right at the moment, and it's empty, and it's been empty for about a month. And of course, that distresses us all. We really want to get together and worship. My name is Lauren Leland, and I'm one of the ruling elders here. So when we gather together on Sunday, uh, we normally go through uh, what we call a liturgy or an order of worship. We gather together and we have a call to worship, which is normally a scripture passage. And then we have a prayer. And after the prayer, we have a uh, time when we confess our sins to our Heavenly Father. And then we have the pronouncement of the forgiveness of sins to all of those who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then after that, we lift our voices in song and we sing a couple of hymns normally or maybe a praise song or two. And then after that, we have a congregational reading. And it's the congregational reading that I'd like to talk about a little bit this morning. We normally will recite either something from Scripture, like the Ten Commandments, or possibly one of the confessions or the creeds or a catechism. Now, the creeds and the catechisms and the confessions are all meant to be instructional tools for us to learn more about our Heavenly Father and about our Savior. They are not scripture, but they point to scripture. We don't put our hope on what the confessions and the catechisms say, we put our hope and trust in what they point to. Think of the creeds and the confessions and the catechisms somewhat like a map. Um, when I was in the service, there was a time when I had to go out in the middle of the woods and they gave me a map and a compass and expected me to find my way. Well, that's kind of the way a catechism or a creed or confession works. It points the way to where you should go. So we should be utilizing those tools in order for us to get to the truth of Scripture. So it's not just the creeds and the catechisms, it's where we go to in order to affirm what is being taught in the creeds and the catechisms and the confessions. And they can be very, very, very useful. We sometimes hear things from our brethren that say things like, uh, no creed but Christ, or we don't need a creed or a confession, we have the Bible. Well, that is true, but what does the Bible say in one particular area or another? What does the confession say about this aspect of the nature of God or of Christ? For instance, at one place in scripture, God talks about changing his mind. Does God really change his mind? Well, if we went to our standards, we could read about God and the Holy Trinity and find more out about that particular aspect. So they're very useful. So what I'd like to talk to you just briefly about today is one of the tools that we use. It's called the Heidelberg Catechism, and we normally recite uh, question one with the answer and question two. I'd only like to look at question one briefly this morning. So question one reads as follows. What is thine only comfort in life and death? Now this could read, what is my only comfort in life and death? Very important question because what it's talking about is ultimate reality. The ultimate reality about what your life is about right here, right now, and those things that give you confidence, those things that give you comfort. And of course, all of those things that you have in this life can pass away, like we currently see in our environment right now with this COVID-19 uh, virus that we have, and that too shall pass. And then of course there's death, and we all know that death is coming, and all of us have the sense of the eternal. All of us have this idea of no matter what somebody gets away with in this life, 
that there is justice that will be coming at some point in time. We speak of sometimes our just rewards. So there's another word in here that's really important and says our only, a very exclusive word, only comfort in life and death. And so that is the question that we ask ourselves and we should pay very close attention while we're reciting this question. And here is the answer according to the Heidelberg Catechism. It comes in several parts. The answer, that I with body and soul, both in life and death, am not my own, but I belong to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ, our faithful Savior, our body and soul belongs to him. We're even said to be the body of Christ. We have been baptized into Christ and we belong to him. Now, most of us can relate to belonging to something at some point in time, maybe a sports team that was excellent, maybe some other organization that you were in, but this is an eternal organization the body of Christ. We are righteous because of him who, Jesus Christ, with his precious blood has fully satisfied for all my sins and delivered me from all the power of the devil. His precious blood, that speaks of his death, the death that he went to the cross where he bore the Father's punishment for all of the transgressions, all of the sins of the elect called by God unto the kingdom of heaven, satisfied for all of my sins, all of the sins of every other person who calls upon the name of the Lord. And it so preserves me that without the will of my heavenly Father, not a hair can fall from my head, Yea, all things must be subservient to my salvation. And we can have confidence in this, that no matter what befalls us in this life, that our Heavenly Father has his hand in it. It speaks of a hair on your head, but what it's actually saying is that every little itty bitty circumstance of your life is in the hands of your Heavenly Father, both in sickness and in health both in accomplishment and in not accomplishment. We need to rely totally that our, on the fact that our Heavenly Father has our entire life in his hands. Yes, we have free will. Yes, we make choices. Yes, we make mistakes. Yet nonetheless, all of those things will be used for, by our Heavenly Father in order to purify us, to sanctify us, and to glorify our Heavenly Father and lift up our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, it says, by his Holy Spirit, he also assures me of eternal life and makes me sincerely willing and ready henceforth to live unto him. So that is the gratitude part. We have been called by the Lord Jesus Christ. He has changed our hearts from from stone to flesh, we've called upon his name. He has set us apart. He has justified us, the scriptures say. He has declared us innocent. And in gratefulness, we are to make choices in our daily life, both in terms of our own moral character and the things that we vote for and the things that we promote and the things that we do in this life should be in terms of gratitude for this great work that our Father in heaven has done for us through his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So let us do that. Let's live unto God our Father. Let's praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's take that message to our neighbors. Let's support those things that promote the kingdom of heaven, which of course is what the church is supposed to do the Great Commission, that we are to take the commandments to all the nations of the world, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Isn't that such a wonderful thing? 
So let us um, look forward to our gathering together. If anybody wishes to um, call upon a deacon or an elder, please make sure that you do so. Call upon each other, congregate as best you can with telephones and Zoom meetings and the many ways that we have to keep in contact. So God bless you all, and I'm looking forward to seeing everybody here at the Branch of Hope as soon as possible. God bless now.